Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, streaming January 25th, only on Netflix. The Dark Side of the Street. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. If you watched Sesame Street in the 1970s throughout the 1980s, you're probably familiar with who was running Mr. Hooper's store, David Robinson. What you may not be familiar with is the turbulent and tragic life of the actor behind the lovable shopkeeper. This is the story of Northern Calloway. I watched Sesame Street. Oh, yeah. I'm old. So I watched Sesame Street 1970s, early 80s is my prime time. Absolutely. And it still goes on. I mean, it's so it's as relevant as SNL is to our cultural landscape. It keeps going. It evolves. I remember watching it. I remember the interstitials of the, even the Muppets are so iconic. Like it's so American of us to watch Sesame Street. And now looking back on it, not, I don't want to make this about a, the culture war or anything like that, but Sesame Street was really diverse mm -hmm. early on. Absolutely. And as I'm just speaking as someone who watched it, who had no information in my mind about who was represented and not represented it just seemed normal to me. I didn't look and be like, wait, there's a disproportionate amount of white people to black people to yeah. Latino yeah. to anything else. Because at least in my world, that's in the East Coast. It's where I just, there was a mix of people mm -hmm. and never thought much of it. And it's interesting to look back and make it about like, wow, how progressive was that in the early 1970s kind of showcasing in a way a uh, lower middle class living, middle class living neighborhoods and an interesting mix of people mm -hmm. where now it's, you know, it, as time has gone on, we're like, well, can we show that mm -hmm. in, you know, 2019, 2021, 2015, 1985. Yeah. And, and you know, you can't, can you show this? Can you not show that? It was kind of meant to be for children mm -hmm. and educational and not really in front of the status quo as far as adults who have opinions and their heads filled with something like, wait a minute, why are we, sh why are we showcasing this? You know, yeah. why is this used to represent? I only want my children to see blank. And yeah. for me, just as a kid growing up, it's something I look back and be like, yeah, I never really, you know, not like I'm a hero or anything like that, but I just never noticed it. I yeah. Never, my head was never filled with anything to notice it. Absolutely. Well, I also remember watching it in, you know, the nineties and, and thinking, back at other shows and how whitewashed they were in comparison. Talk about it being super progressive in a time where people didn't really have that on their minds, especially with children's programming and how it still goes on. It still is. So Sesame Street is iconic, important. Mm -hmm. There's a very large cast mm -hmm. of people over the years. I'm kind of looking at like the early 1970s, I suppose late 90, 1960s, I think when it started. The 1980s is that classic time because a lot of yeah. things are pulled from that. There's not a lot of like new characters that are represented in media in some way. Exactly. Like, you know, there's no, there's not like a newer Big Bird. True. It's not a new Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> no, no, no. But there are new characters now. Like yes. there's an autistic girl, like we said before. It's it's ever evolving, even though it has that kind of foundational cast of characters. You're listening to Ghost Town. There's going to be a dark side to it. Yes. And I spent for some reason, a lot of time going back and looking at Sesame Street from a production point of view and, mm -hmm. and how what it was and what it represented, because I have had, had a need to watch it in mm -hmm. a very long time. I guess if I was sitting around watching Sesame Street alone in the dark, you'd yeah. be like, what is happening? Like, grown-ass man. No, no, you know, no judgment if you yeah. that's what you want to do. But I you know, you look back with, with hindsight and information, and you realize it's still a, a certain time. It's still human beings that are working in, in entertainment mm -hmm. and different personalities and 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 it doesn't always work out the person you see growing up that's in a way helping educate you mm -hmm. as somebody who is a little bit of a, a latchkey kid a little bit and they have their own demons and they have their own issues and i came upon the actor northern calloway i was actually looking up another thing about an episode that was banned the oh. banned sesame street episode i you know, <laughs> love that so we'll talk about that maybe in another episode but it, i found 
the actor Northern Calloway, and I looked him up. I was like, oh yeah, I remember this guy. He was mm-hmm. a really important guy. He was there yeah. from s- season two up and through ni- the late 1980s. So he was a-, a huge, a huge staple in it. Northern Calloway was an American actor and singer, best known for his role as David Robinson on Sesame Street from 1971 to 1989. It's a long run. It's a good run. The 50th anniversary of the show came around in 2019, but unfortunately, some of the original stars didn't live to see the day. Northern Calloway was one of them. Uh. Northern James Calloway was born on September 10th, 1948 in New York. He graduated from New York City's High School of the Performing Arts. Yeah. Fame. Fame, fame. It's a fame, fame. In 1966, and joined the Lincoln Center Repertory Company just two days later. Northern performed in A Midsummer Night's Dream and The Three Musketeers at the Stratford Festival in 1968. He also played the lead in the new Federal Theater production of the Louis Armstrong story. Hmm. Accomplished theater actor. Classically trained. Amazing. Northern started his Broadway career in the same year and featured in Tigers at the Gates in 1968 and The Me Nobody Knows in 1970. He didn't give up his stage career when he landed his job in Sesame Street and performed in six productions of Broadway from 1968 to 1980. So Jesus, he was busy. doing double duty, like talented, loved the arts and, and loved his work. 1971 is when Northern joined the Sesame Street cast. It was during the show's fourth season as he came on as David Robinson, the boyfriend of the character Maria who's a longtime Mm -hmm. cast member of the show. Actor and fellow castmate Will Lee passed away in 1982, and after this, the series decided to make Northern's character the new owner of what was Will's character. Mr. Hooper's store is like a major... Huge. Yeah, that's like things I remember. I'll go into Mr. Hooper's store. Exactly. Northern was one of the very few human characters for 18 years. He appeared in 1,268 episodes. Oh, my God. Prolific. Absolutely. Doesn't and be. doing sh- and doing yeah. Shakespeare on the side. Yeah. And in 1980 is when things start to go south. We're going to go to 1980 right after this break. Greetings. I'm Andrew Carey, the host of Blood Moon Podcast. Blood Moon Podcast brings to life stories of the strange and sometimes terrifying You will be immersed in paranormal accounts and tales augmented by sound effects and music. Listeners can submit their stories and have them be brought to life. You can summon Blood Moon Podcast on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other major podcast apps. Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish. Or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Listen closely. I might just know what you're looking for. Maybe it's a little bit more excitement in your life. A jolt to the system to get the blood pumping again. Just the smallest, tiniest taste. A little something to dilate the pupils. Do allow me to welcome you to the Horror Hill. A little getaway I know about. A place with scenic overlooks and fresh terror on tap that chill even the most discerning connoisseurs of the macabre to the bone. Join me each week to get all of the ghastly, gory and grotesque stories that I've handpicked from the works of previously published and indie authors by subscribing to Horror Hill on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you prefer to get your horror fix. My name is Jason Hill, and you can take my word for it. Oh, and remember, 
That's only a story. Right? Hi, hello, how are you? Hello. We're checking in. Deep breaths, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Or just some panicked ones, short, four <laughs> short ones through the nose, one long one through the mouth. I can never, I, I get anxious when people say, no, no, it's, it's two and hold and then out. And I was like, now I'm no. thinking about I'm counting numbers. Yeah, you're suffocating. And now I'm suffocating. Yourself. I'll just mm. do short, shallow breaths. Okay. Taking in the least amount of oxygen and... I guess letting out the most carbon dioxide as possible. Yeah. Okay. That's very good. That's what I'm doing. That's the beauty of Ghost Town, though. You can do it however way you want to do it. Yeah. In fact, we sort of encourage we, it. <laughs> we do to our detriment, probably. Yeah. Ugh. So we want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting the show, letting people know about it, mm-hmm. spreading the good word. Yeah, the good gospel. Yes, yeah, spreading Planting the gospel. Planting the seeds. Yes, just far and wide. Ah. Uh. A beautiful thing it's a super bloom happening going here. into different countries and different places and different continents that don't need ghost town no they need wells <laughs> but you're like well i have some ghost town episodes yeah. like, we don't need them and we want to say hello to our government absolutely we're bootlickers for the ghost town we government. got to be the mayors in non-alphabetical order <laughs> yeah david bull hello. already see already that's already alphabetical <laughs> hello david bull Ashley Matson. Hello. Now we're off. <laughs> Dara Rosenzweig. Hello. James Thomas Aquinas Harrington. <laughs> That's right. That's correct. I don't know. Inaccurate. Why not? Just like our research. Hello. And to one governor to destroy. No. No. Rule them all. To rule them all. Not Fairly, destroy. honestly. She's got her finger. It's right yeah. on the button. Yeah, it's on absolutely. the button. Absolutely. But she's not going to push it. <laughs> no. Avian Noble. So if you want early access, bonus episodes, no chit chat. You want to cut out time is money and you have neither. Go to patreon.com slash ghost town pod. A bonus episode will be up within a day or two of you listening to this. I promise. I make that promise personally to you because that bony's on me. And here's something that you don't get if you get early access, a Apple podcast review. Hmm. Literally my favorite. Five <laughs> stars. This is from Autumn's Violet 97 in the US and A. You guys do such an amazing job, and your check-ins add an extra flair that I haven't found in other podcasts. Everything about this podcast is awesome. Keep up the amazing work, guys. That's nice. great. Yeah. I love that. A little Thank extra you. flair. I I love that. You thought you were flareless? I did. Uh, I like it when people appreciate our banter instead of wanting it to not exist. Yeah, or us not exist. <laughs> we also got an Instagram message from Kat Josell. Uh, she said some very complimentary things. Hey, guys, you two are really entertaining and have gotten me through many a home DIY project since early days of quarantine. So thank you. I had an idea about some potential content that might be of interest to you. With St. Patrick's Day coming up, yes, I thought it might be timely to cover some of the crazy, haunted shit that goes down in Ireland. I'm half Irish and I visited twice, but didn't know that Halloween had its origins there. Me either. Read on. And she gives us a little taste of the Irish hell caves. I can't wait to read up on this stuff and do some deep digging. And if we do an episode on that, that was us finding it independently. <laughs> Nothing to do with Kat. She gets no credit Uh-oh. whatsoever. Shots have been fired. Who are you going to believe? No, we want her to keep doing DIY projects to our podcast. That's true. Step down. What, what has she made us lately? Great question. <laughs> See? <laughs> wow. wow. A man Always with power. on the defense. <laughs> A man with power. <laughs> well, let's go back to Sesame Street, 1980, Northern Calloway. Northern Calloway was arrested on September 19th, 1980 in Nashville, Tennessee. He had been at Mary Stagman's home, the marketing director of the Tennessee Performing Arts Center, after he performed there on the 13th of the same month. Something happened while he was there, not sure what exactly. Northern assaulted Mary with an iron and caused serious head and rib injuries. After that happened, he fled the scene and broke into two other homes, destroying some of their property while he was at it. Jeez. Northern didn't stop there. He proceeded to steal a first grader's backpack, break a windshield with a rock, and steal a bag of herbicide from an elderly Douglas Wright. 
He then spilled the herbicide on his body and began rolling on the ground and running around. Douglas tried to hold Northern at gunpoint, even fired a warning shot at him. He responded to the shot by diving to the ground and screaming that he had been shot before jumping back, washing his hands and face in Douglas's birdbath, then fled the scene. Witnesses at the time recall he was wearing nothing but a Superman t-shirt. Jesus Christ. Obviously, we're in 1980. He's in Sesame Street until 1989, so it's interesting to go back and you know watch some of his performances. You wouldn't know it, but what is there to know? And if this was today and Sesame Street was on and information flowed the way it does, yeah, I, I don't know if that would be helpful to him, but probably would not be on Sesame Street. Yeah, I think after his, that. his time on Sesame Street would have ended a little bit earlier than 1989 if this information was out, especially considering... The nature of it, the fact that a child was involved, like, it just, you just want to know what the hell was happening to him, you know, what was going on, if there was any inclination that he had behavior like this in the past, psychologically, if he was on a substance, or there's so many variables as to what happened. I mean, just like, what a day, God. And mental health as a option in mm-hmm. 1980. Probably wasn't great. Who wants mm-hmm. to admit to that or believe in that? It's hard now. So I imagine 1980 probably wasn't as accepted or thought like, oh, this is a great option. Yeah. Even though it, in hindsight, it was. Yeah. Northern was arrested after being found hiding in a couple's garage. He was screaming, help, I'm David from Sesame Street, and they're trying to kill me. Mm. He was immediately taken to a mental hospital for an examination. This was all kept quiet from the public, and Northern was allowed to continue appearing on Sesame Street while he received help. So, That's you know, kind of great. I think, it, yeah, I think it is <laughs> great because it wasn't it wasn't him being like, "Hey, listen, I'm a malicious person. Yeah. I just like to do bad." It was obviously something beyond his. Yeah, he you know, needed help. He got it, and he was able to continue working because in so many cases, you stop working or you know you don't have a job anymore, and it can get worse. And I think once your circumstance snowballs and gets worse and worse, it's hard to come back from that. So it. I know it's pretty nice that felt like he could concurrently get help and keep working. Northern's final years on Sesame Street were reportedly spotted with times of erratic behavior and deteriorating health. He was said to have bitten the music coordinator, Danny Epstein, during an onset fight. Northern was also unable to participate in the filming of Follow That Bird. Since it took place in Canada and his criminal record meant he wasn't allowed to enter the country. Mm. And that's why he wasn't featured in the film. It's probably tough. You That's know, really tough. Everyone's going. And yeah. It's a movie being That's part rough. of something that, that you help build. By 1987, the executive producer, Dulcie Singer, had become concerned about the viability of Northern's future with Sesame Street. This led to the show's writer slowly ending David and Maria's relationship in the storyline. In 1989, Northern Calloway was dismissed from Sesame Street after the biting incident. David was last seen on the 20th season finale that aired on May 12th, 1989. The 21st season started and David's absence was explained by saying that David had gone to live with his grandmother on a farm to look after her. It wasn't long after he was terminated from Sesame Street that Northern was placed into Stony Lodge Hospital, a mental institution that's located in Westchester County, New York. He was being treated for a bipolar disorder. On January 9th, 1990, Northern and a staff member were involved in a serious altercation. He was transported to Phelps Memorial Hospital in North Tarrytown, but there was nothing anyone could do. At the age of 41, Northern Calloway was pronounced dead. His cause of death was listed as exhaustive psychosis. It is described as a controversial condition that is mainly given to those who die while in constraints in custody. Northern was buried at Ferncliff Cemetery. I think it's just a combination of a lot of things happening to your body at once and your mind at once and the restraint not being able to, I I don't know if be able to kind of like move and expel some of that energy, whatever that is that obviously that nervous, anxious painful energy and you're restrained and I guess internally shuts you down, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So a, a really, a really sad end. And I, if you were somebody who watched Sesame Street, you didn't, if, if you're old like me, awesome. If you're super young, great. You have your whole life ahead of you. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, but I, I'd say, you know, if you want a really interesting lesson in, in culture and, and entertainment and where Sesame Street was like doing a lot of really great stuff and you want to check out Northern Calloway's, he's got songs, he's there's just so many great clips with him. I mean, to be an actor and interact with a puppet, mm-hmm. you think like, oh, that's easier. No, that's got to be difficult. Like you yeah. have to make a connection with a puppet. And I really just learned to appreciate that. And now looking back, somebody you know involved in like acting and just doing the 
the easy stuff is hard, at least for somebody like me and probably for a lot of other people. You just got to give a lot of credit and, you know, celebrate, you know, this person's contribution for and to a lot of people's upbringing. May, you know, if it's not you, maybe it's somebody that's a, a parent or a grandparent, maybe, yeah. or or somebody who goes back and like likes the old likes the old episodes, or somebody who's just into nostalgia. Uh, I, I encourage you to check it out. Yeah, that's that was beautiful. Yeah. That's a beautiful epitaph. Yeah. Although says Mr. Stallon for a great show, I loved it, and I I dressed up as Oscar the Grouch once for my thirty eighth birthday. And sort of right now, a little bit. (laughs) Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today, or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com.